This is a bookball summary of the book The Procrastination Cure by Damon Zahariadis. Have you ever experienced any of the following scenarios? Despite your best efforts, you consistently underestimate how long it takes to complete tasks, leaving you scrambling to finish your work on time. Frequently, you put off paying your bills until you've charged interest, and you don't get to the doctor until a minor complaint becomes a major issue. You might suffer from chronic procrastination if you're nodding along. The good news is that you don't have to feel ashamed of that. Humans have an inbuilt tendency to procrastinate. There's nothing wrong with that. Being productive all the time isn't in our nature. When procrastination becomes a habit, it can end up being a problem. There's no better time to learn proven strategies for managing it than now. To finally kick the habit, find out why you procrastinate. Your present self wants instant gratification without considering long-term benefits and costs. But your future self wants long-term gratification from completing tasks that bring personal satisfaction and professional success. Imagine you have to give a big presentation in a week's time and find yourself with a free afternoon. It makes sense to devote this time to your presentation. Your future self will certainly thank you for it, but your present self? That self would rather watch Netflix. Your present self and your future self both want gratification, but they are not on the same page to address a chronic procrastination habit. You have to understand why you procrastinate in the first place and reframe failure as data that your current approach needs improvement. If you suffer from perfectionism, you may find yourself procrastinating whenever you feel that your efforts will result in a not quite perfect outcome. Sometimes, anxiety around decision making can lead to procrastination. But most tasks require you to make decisions, or accept that you might sometimes make the wrong choice and move forward with confidence. If a task on your to-do list fills you with dread, find the best way to get started. Mark Twain once said to eat the frog first thing in the morning, and every other task will be more enjoyable by comparison after that. To gain momentum with a task you're not looking forward to, focus on the first 10 minutes. By tackling those first 10 minutes, you've already started to gather energy and momentum. This technique can be applied to every kind of task. Start by taking 10 minutes to scrub the sink. The second technique is to start tasks when you know you'll have the energy for them. If your productivity peaks at night, start your important projects then. A typical to-do list can stretch to a few pages, but if you shorten it, you may get more done. Seven tasks are the magic number for a to-do list because it forces you to cut back on busy work and concentrate on the essentials instead. Sticking to the seven tasks or fewer rule is the simplest way to get your to-do list under control. But the hard part is deciding which tasks make the cut. To do this, make three lists. One for short-term goals, one for medium-term goals, and one for long-term goals. When you sit down to work, be careful not to multitask. Do one thing from start to finish before moving on to the next. A calendar can be a procrastinator's best friend or worst enemy. Use it smartly to stay on track. An overfilled calendar sets you up for failure, while an underfilled calendar leaves you with too much free time. Use time management tools and techniques to make the most of your day. To leverage your calendar for maximum productivity, fill each day with enough tasks to take up the time available. Be sure to apply Parkinson's law and don't give yourself any longer than you really need to get a task done. To avoid putting off a six hour task, break it down into shorter periods of time. Take a 15 minute break when the timer rings and repeat over the next six hours. Procrastination is a battle between your present self and your future self. You need to stop giving your present self the opportunity to sabotage what your future self wants to achieve. Your focus is a precious resource that needs to be channeled. Set up your space in a way that eliminates or minimizes environmental distractions and invest in a white noise machine or a pair of quality headphones to block out noise. For example, you're more likely to run a marathon if you share your plans on Facebook, just like you're more likely to write a novel if you tell your friends that you're working on a book. In other words, if you make yourself accountable to someone else, you're far more likely to achieve your goals. So, if you want to get something done, recruit someone else who will hold you accountable for actually doing it. Remember that novel? Tell someone you're going to write it, including when you'd like to have it finished. Ask them to check in on your progress from time to time. This will give you the gentle nudge you need until you finally type the words, the end. Want another effective tactic? Don't set your own deadlines. 
We rarely respect self-imposed deadlines because we don't feel too bad about breaking promises we've made to ourselves. But we do respect the promises we make to others. A 2002 MIT study asked two groups of students to submit a paper by a specific deadline. But there was a catch. Those in the first group worked to a deadline imposed on them by the researchers. Members of the second group were allowed to set their own deadlines. Perhaps unsurprisingly, people in the second group were far more likely to turn in their papers past the deadline. Eliminate the distractions that lead to procrastination. The 21st century has given rise to a whole new host of distractions, including social media platforms and mobile phone apps. To eliminate these distractions, put your phone on airplane mode, install an internet blocker and make a physical note to look it up later. There are many psychological causes behind your procrastination habit, including fear of failure and negative self-talk. However, removing dull or pointless tasks from your to-do list is almost guaranteed to increase your productivity. When you review your to-do list, cut any unnecessary tasks that won't let anyone else down or contribute to your goals. When necessary, tasks are boring. You'll constantly find ways to postpone them, so delegate the responsibility to someone else whenever possible. If you're a freelancer, say no to work that doesn't engage you, and only take on projects that capture your interest. If you have to do a boring task, turn it into a game and see how much you can get done. To beat procrastination, become your own cheerleader. Negative self-talk leads to procrastination, so you need to stop with the negativity and start believing in yourself. There are many causes of procrastination, and you shouldn't feel embarrassed to share the fact that you struggle with it. Sharing your struggles can make procrastination much easier to overcome. Procrastination is the behavioural impulse that often acts against us, but you can use another behavioural impulse to your advantage by telling someone you plan to do something. If you want to avoid the procrastination that comes with self-imposed deadlines, ask someone else to set them for you. Negative self-talk can creep into your consciousness in many different forms, including self-criticism, comparing yourself to others, beating yourself up for your perceived failings, and being a perfectionist who sets impossibly high standards only to berate yourself when you can't live up to them. Surround yourself with positive people to eliminate negative self-talk and cultivate optimism and self-belief, two powerful weapons in the fight against procrastination. What's your most important key takeaway? Please comment down below and share the video if you like it. Check out these other two videos. Thank you and until next time.